Hi all, uh, today we'll be solving a compass error question. We'll be using the azimuth method to calculate the compass error and we'll be using sun as a celestial body. Alright, so the question is that it's 22nd of September 1992 and it's PM at the ship, so it's evening on your ship and the dead reckoning of the DR position is 18 degrees 20 minutes north, 85 degrees 40 minutes east. The azimuth of the sun was 265 degrees compass and the chronometer showed a time of 10.03.20. If the chronometer error was 6 minutes 18 seconds slow and the variation was 2 degrees, you have to calculate the deviation of the compass. Alright, so of course we'll be finding the compass error first then applying the variation to calculate the deviation. So let's start with the solution. So before we start with the solution, the first part of the solution is solving the ambiguity of the chronometer time. So when the chronometer time is given to us as 10 0, 20, 20, 0, 3, 20, that is 10 hours to 3 minutes and 20 seconds, the other possibility for that chronometer time will be 22 hours 0, 3 minutes and 20 seconds. So basically we add 12 hours to the chronometer time given to us. So 10 0, 3, 20 could be 10 0, 3, 20 in the morning or 10 0, 3, 20 in the evening which would make it 22 0, 3, 20. All right, so we write down both the possibilities of the chronometer time. Then we apply our error. So the error given to us is six minutes, 18 seconds slow. So when the error is slow, we will add the error. So we'll add the same error in both the cases. All right. When you add six minutes and 18 seconds, you get the GMT time. And again, you get two possibilities. So you get 10 hours, 0, 9, 38 or 22 hours, 0, 9 minutes, 38 seconds. Right. So to find out which one is the correct time, we will apply the LIT correction or the longitude in time correction. For that, we divide longitude given to us in the question by 15. So the longitude given to us in the question is 085 degrees, 40 minutes. And you divide it by 15, you will get 5 hours, 42 minutes, 40 seconds. Whenever longitude is east, you will add the LIT correction to the LMT to get the GMT. So longitude east. GMT is the least that would mean that GMT would be less than LMT so you will add your longitude in east correction longitude in time easterly longitude correction so in one case you add you get 15 hours 52 minutes and 18 seconds and in the other case you get 3 hours 52 minutes 18 seconds the hint given to us in the question is that it's pm on the ship when it's pm on the ship that means on the ship it's evening so the local mean time is evening out of the two scenarios we have this scenario here which tells us that it's evening this is pm right and it's 22nd september here so the only possibility where we have the local mean time as the evening is the first case and therefore our gmt also becomes 22nd of september 10 o'clock in the morning here right because in this case this is am it's not pm it's 3 in the morning so we cancel out this this is not the possibility for us Therefore, our correct GMT time would be 22nd of September, 10.09.38. Alright, and this is the time you will be using, not the LMT time, but the GMT time that you will be using for the rest of the question. So, to get the compass error, first we have to calculate the, sorry, we calculate the GHA and declination. From the GHA we'll get the LHA. Let me show you how. So you go into the nautical almanac for 1992 for 22nd of September for 10 hours and you find out the GHA as well as the declination for 10 hours. Then you find out the increment for 9 hours, 9 minutes and 38 seconds and you also find the declin decorrection value for declination for that. So the resultant GHA and the declination will be for the 10 hours 9 minutes 30 seconds so let me show you how so we go into the nautical almanac for 22nd of september and uh, this is 22nd of september and this is 22nd of september and over here it's 22nd of september 10 hours is here so if i go into the sun column which is here this is the gha this is the declination i can get the following value so i can get the gha I can get the declination 0 degrees 8.5 minutes north 
the declination is decreasing to the next tower so my d collection will be subtracted and the d value is 1 so these are all the things that i can get from the 22nd september page for 1000 hours all right and then i will go back i will check what minutes is it so my minutes is 9 minutes and 38 seconds so for that i will find out my increment and also my d correction value for the d value of 1 so 9 minutes and 38 seconds i'll go back into the almanac what i'll do is i'll uh, 9 minutes and 38 seconds so this is my there you go so i have 9 minutes and 38 seconds so 9 minutes and 38 seconds is here right this is for the sun column so my increment is here two degrees 24.5 and the d value is 1 for which i'll get a correction value so d value is 1 and my d correction will be 0 0.2 which i'll be subtracting because my declination was decreasing to the next star all right before i go i'll just uh, put it on this page here where i'll be getting the correction value probably all right so those are the values that's how i got my gha my increment increments are always added you will add the increment and get your gha and then declination d value of 1 i showed you and also the d correction value of 0 0.2 which you subtracted so you got your declination as 0 degrees 8.3 minutes north this is the final declination uh, the gh of course you add the increment you get the corrected gh and if the longitude is east you will add the east longitude and if the longitude was west you would subtract the west longitude so normally the rule of thumb is longitude west gh is the best gh is more than lha and longitude east gh is the least that would mean gh is less than lha all right so once you add the gh this value 334 plus 85 is more than 360 what you will get is 419 whenever you see it's more than 360 you subtract it from 360 and you will get 059 degrees so that's what i've got here 059 and of course this is the minute side is normal 15 plus 15.2 plus 40 is 55.2 so you get your lha then you name your lha in this case you will name your lha west because whenever lha is between 0 to 180 you name it west if it is more than 180 to 360 you will name it east all right so here you will name it west uh, why we name it i'll show it to you later on so once you got these values all you have to do is find the a value by dividing tan of latitude by tan of LHA, put in the latitude value of 18 degrees 20 minutes, LHA value of 59 degrees 55.2 minutes, and then what you get is your A value as 0.19. Now, stick, I've stuck to two decimal places, you can write down more decimal places if you want. Also, if you get any negative sign in your calculator, ignore the negative sign, all right? But you have to name A. So, in this case, I have named A south. Why? Because A is named opposite to the latitude unless LHA is between 90 and 270. Your LHA is not between 90 and 270 so you will name it opposite to latitude. Your latitude was north so you will name it opposite to north which is south. Then you calculate the B value by dividing tan of declination which is 0, 0 degrees 8.3 minutes dividing by sine of LHA which is 59 degrees 55.2 minutes. All right, the B value is zero and you name it same as declination, which is north. So I have named it north. Now north and south, you will add it in this case. Of course, it doesn't make a difference. So because the other value is zero and you retain the name of the larger, which is south, retain name of larger. All right. So you will take your A and B value. And in this case, of course, it's zero. So it doesn't matter. So 0 0.19. And it is south because A is the larger value and A is south. So you will name C as south as well. All right. So 0 0.19 plus 0 0.00. Then we have tan of azimuth, which is equal to 1 divided by C times cos of latitude. Put the value of C. Put the value of cos of latitude. Solve the denominator first and then divide 1 by it. You get tan azimuth equals 5.544589 I have gone up to 6 decimal places here you can go up to 5 or more if you want to take tan to the other side make it tan inverse 
so that you get azimuth equal to 79.8 then you have to name the azimuth as you can see i have named it south this south comes from the value of c so c is south so i have named it south so name of c this is name of c c is south so i have named it south this west comes from lha remember you named your lha earlier you named it west on top so i have named it same as lha that is west now south 79 degrees west would mean if this is south and this is west you are going 79.8 this value is 79.8 south 79.8 west if this is 180 and this is 270 you will be adding 79.8 to 180 so 180 plus 79.8 will give you the true bearing of 259.8 all right so that is your true bearing then you take your compass bearing which is given to you in the question is 265 the difference between the two will give you your compass error now 265 minus 259.8 and i will erase the rest of it of course so that you guys don't get confused with what is going on here if it too much is written here so i'll again write these down so this value is 180 degrees plus 79.8 all right and then this value is 265 minus 259.8 now because compass is more your error will be west so compass best error is west so if compass is more than true there is no negative sign of course so 265 minus 259.8 will give you 5.2 degree compass is more so your error will be west then you have your variation given to you as 2 degrees east which will make your deviation 7.2 degrees west opposite names you are adding it and retaining the name of the larger but i'll show you conceptually what this means is all right this means your true bearing all right true bearing is 259.8 your compass bearing was 265 degrees all right so this is your compass error which is 5.2 degrees west then your variation is 2 degrees east variation is the angle between true and magnetic where magnetic is to the east of true so this is 2 degrees east so therefore your deviation which is the angle between the compass and the magnetic is this angle here and you have to see where your compass is with respect to the magnetic so when you add the two these two becomes 7.2 degree and your compass is to the west of magnetic so it becomes 7.2 degrees west so this is how it is conceptually solved all right so try to use the concept to solve the question and i hope this was a good exercise for you guys to understand how to calculate the compass error using the sun as a celestial body uh, let me know what you thought about this video i'll see you soon with my next video it will show you the calculation of amplitude of a sun bye guys see you